We are activating your unique self-discovery one show at a time. The Orchard of Wisdom Self-Discovery Podcast are at your fingertips, just waiting to inspire and invite you in discovering just how awesome you really are and how to navigate through life in joy, enrichment, personal abundance, in mind, body, spirit, heart and soul. All the people we bring you are here to serve you on your journey of life. Do enjoy our next show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Building Your Business, right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. My guest today is Vicky Neffling, and we're going to be talking about being unstoppable, but also we're going to be talking about how we examine in our delivery of our message. Are we really getting our message out in the right intent? Are we attaching something else to it? I have, she says she's been coaching and mentoring for speakers for over 26 years, and she remembers one woman who was speaking to a group of 10 people. Um, she was shaking and looking like she was going to be engaging with her with a simple question in a uh, controversial and a conversational tone allowed her to take her mind off speaking and relax her whole body changed and she actually began to smile that is when she knew uh, actually says i knew that i had to help others get past their fear of the speech and just relax with the fact that it's just a conversation so many fail to connect with the audience because they're not being authentic or allowing themselves to be vulnerable but this is lowering those walls that will allow others to connect and hear our message. And our message does definitely need to be heard. So why is it important that we work on how we present our message online and in person? Well, we spend time trying to write down the words that will teach, reach our audience and fill a need, but often neglect examining how we deliver that message. Mm-hmm. From video to stage, our impact is tied to how comfortable and authentic we are in sharing our message. If we don't connect, our message will get lost. Our mission to work with you and make things impactful and show that nail and that next pre- presentation or meeting and showing your presence will be led to you and greater profits. Um, she is a child, second child of seven children. Uh, she knew college was not in the cards for her and she got mm-hmm. a part-time job and put herself through six-month business school in Pittsburgh. Uh, upon graduation, she continued to work two jobs and look for many personal and professional development tapes, books on courses she could find. The first for learning continued and eventually she found herself working for a large transportation company in Atlanta. Here she learned to embrace change and go outside of her comfort zone. Well, that is something we all need to learn to do, isn't it? (laughs) And it's also where she was introduced to Toastmasters. There she spent the next three decades mentoring, coaching, training, and stepping outside that comfort zone. Her journey has been one to continue and be fueled by the passion for a long life learning and helping others see their potential and slay their next presentation uh, or Zoom. And her message is to stop fearing the next big speech, presentation, or sales calls. Just to remember, it's a conversation. Relax, smile, and enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm. And really, quite honestly, we want people to feel they're not talking, um, you know, at us, but with us, right? Yeah. And that's really the key, isn't it? Welcome, love. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for that introduction, too. But it is true. It is just a conversation. Mm-hmm. And I think as soon as you start to realize that, it just you could just feel the weight yeah. go away from everything. It's oftentimes we spend hours, weeks preparing and psyching ourselves up for a five minute presentation. And it, it's like, you know, this stuff. Yes. If you just if they just met you at a bar right. and ask you to tell them about your project. Would you prepare for that? Mm -hmm. No, you would just tell them what it was. You'd be authentic. You'd be passionate. You would be real. And, and that's all we're trying to get from you ever is for you to be authentic. And engagement. You know, we, when we are talking with people, we are engaging them in that conversation. If you if you're doing a standing presentation or you actually are in conversation with someone, it's all about that engagement. Are you connecting? Are they resonating with you? Do they wish Mm -hmm. to engage back with you? (laughs) Do they feel open enough or do they feel you're grandstanding? 
right? Which do, you, some... do you give them a minute to talk? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pause and take a breath and be deliberate <laughs> with how you speak. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I remember some of the, uh, I was a project manager for all those years at the transportation company and we did audio conference calls. Mm -hmm. And I remember being on calls with people that just, you, you were trying to trying to hear where there would be a moment <laughs> that you could get your thought in. And that's one of the reasons why I love Zoom or Teams now that I can actually, you know, give them an eye or understand, okay, I think they're going to take a breath here that I could say something. But I that, always, go ahead. No, I was saying, I always know uh, when I'm interviewing people, if they're what I call stage presentation people. Yeah. Because they're on that stage and they're presenting and it's very rah-rah. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's not, you know, this is a different audience. When you're talking, mm -hmm. um, you know, in a boardroom or if you're talking, most people are doing things by Zoom nowadays, or, you know, yeah, or right. interacting this way, is that we do want more kind of intimacy. We do yeah. want it to be more personal where we feel mm -hmm. we can be relaxed. We don't want to have to be, you know, stiff around the boardroom, scared of your input. Yeah, if we gain sure. that engagement, you, you speak to invite conversation. Yeah. And as a leader, that's important to remember because you want your people to be innovative and yes. creative. You want them to bring ideas. But how are you opening the door for them to do that? Yeah, Sometimes I mean, I think, not I think so much. no, no, and I think a lot of kind of CEOs or people, you know, they, they have a disconnect to the rest mm -hmm. of the people in the company, and they mm -hmm. come in with their ideas and they lord them over people instead of, <laughs> I have this vision, what do you think? All yeah. of those other people are in that position, in the positions they're in, running the departments that they're running mm -hmm. because of their expertise. So yeah. why are you not engaging them and to hear mm -hmm. their opinion? Yeah. And be okay when their opinion is a new idea, is mm. different than yours, because that's what will take the company to that next level, because people start to think of what ifs. Mm. And you've got to be careful with the what ifs. It's like, well, what if this <laughs> goes wrong? What if the, and the, the, yeah. account, the accountant is generally the one that's going to come up with that, right? And you need that. You need to know, well, yeah, yes. that could be an obstacle. That could be an obstacle. But you mm -hmm. want the other voices to, what if we could do this? You know, the mm -hmm. sense of enthusiasm that becomes rather yeah. catching and intoxicating. Yeah. And if you take it from uh, entrepreneurial, <clears throat> not in a company, maybe it, you're a solopreneur or a small group. And how are you getting your message to your audience? You may have the greatest con uh, grasp of what your product and service is. You may have all the facts and figures. But if you don't reach your mm -hmm. audience mm -hmm. from what, you know, from the aspect of, what do they want? What do they need? And how can what I have fill that need and do it in a way that makes them hungry yes. for what you have to offer? And that can't be with a monotone, yeah. um, you know, kind of fact, this is the way it is, you know, I'm going to turn you off immediately. But if you have something in there that is touching my soul, that's really as if you listen to me tell my, you know my husband the mm -hmm. day that morning of what i needed what i wanted now i'm going to pay attention that now i'm going to remember you and that's what you want yeah it reminds me actually of a um, a work thing i did for for a day and everybody had different presentations and, and my daughter was with me i think she might have been around 12 or something at the time mm -hmm. and this guy was talking about something and i can't remember what because i was busy doing my thing and he was monotone all the way through, <laughs> you know, and she actually went up to him and said, look, your topic is very interesting, but you're very boring. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, you know, if, oh. you, if you don't lighten it up, you know, it, nobody's going to listen. And, you know, yeah. she's, she's, you know, um, obviously a coach now. So, you know, I'm a different mm -hmm. kind. She works with people with brain injuries. But it's that you've got something valuable to say. What people right. want to hear is your enthusiasm, your passion. Yeah. Why does it drive you? Because you're inviting people to get on the bus. 
right? Yeah. And if you're not right. inspirational, inspiration begets invitation. If you're not inspirational, mm -hmm. where's the invite? Yeah, very true. When I'm teaching or coaching, I often tell them, think of the songs that you hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. First of all, you can't see the person. Yeah. So everything, every connection that they make is with their voice, with mm. that with that roller coaster ride that they take you on in a, in a, a song, yeah. there's the high notes, the low notes, the, the story that's intertwined in that, that makes you remember that song. Yeah. And, and that's what you have to have in your message. Even if it's a serious subject, mm. take them on that roller coaster ride. So again, they'll remember what you have to say. The, I was watching um, Trevor Noah last night in The Daily Show, and he showed mm -hmm. a couple of campaign videos. Oh, and, awesome. and, uh, but one of them was, and it really was, oh, yeah, and it was about a young white couple, a, a, a baby and a, and a child, and the police knocking the door and arresting her because she had an abortion, and people turned mm -hmm. her in. And, uh, uh, and then the kid's crying, don't take my mummy. And it was very, very dramatic. But mm -hmm. as a, a campaign video, you know, it, it really kind of, I think, instead of somebody standing up there and going, rah, da, rah, da, da, it was something that would hit home yeah. with people, right? So it had a huge mm -hmm. impact. And then there was another one of a woman in Utah, and she's, um, I don't know, in her 60s, and she was running for mm -hmm. council, and she mm -hmm. rapped offbeat <laughs> i'm pro but you remembered but it but you remembered it um yes. but it was like uh, as he was saying okay you are a, a huge conservative from utah who's your audience <laughs> you know because i don't know too many other you know <laughs> conservatives out there that are into rap you know so <laughs> it is again is like Yes, you want to know your audience, but you also want to expand who that audience yes. could be. Very good. Very good point. And I think a lot of, of folks don't get that. Mm. So that's a great reminder for people. And I know that whenever a, a person gets in front of the camera, it, it, a lot of times all of the, the past, the things that they were told when they were little, you have to be quiet. You can't be this. You can't be that all start to come in their mind. <laughs> all of the failures of, of walking in their, you know, second grade classroom up to the front and your teacher telling you, you weren't good enough. You weren't mm. this. That yes. all comes back. And so there's a lot of baggage that you have to get rid of. And, and that's why I just want people to understand it is just a conversation mm -hmm. and, and trust and believe in yourself that what you know, what you have to offer is worth us listening to. Yes. You're selling it anyway. You yeah. might, it must be important to you. So make us believe that it's important to us. Yeah. How many people make the mistake of trying to copy somebody else's style? And, you know, and it's like, hang on, there's something out of sync here. You know, and or you see somebody come in and they've if they've got all the slides, they've got all of that, mm -hmm. and they're so kind of corporate. But it's like, are you in a corporate setting? You know, yeah, is right. what setting are you in, and are you setting the stage, or are you making <laughs> people feel uncomfortable? Yeah, and and nobody wants to feel uncomfortable. No. You know, people want to smile. They want to remember, uh, you know, have a, have a memory come to them that re really brings them to what your point is and what you're, what you're selling. There was a, a comment that we had talking about um, car dealerships, you know, they're tremendous for that. You'll go through, you'll watch a whole commercial and, and you'll think, well, what was the product? Yes. <laughs> but yeah. it was about the emotion mm -hmm. that that commercial brought to you that will remember make you remember that product and that's why they always at the end show what the product is because <laughs> they know through the whole thing you had no idea that that was for you know coca-cola or bp or whatever right right exactly um or then of course you've got the other commercials where they have everyone together you know singing we in a world we love and all of that mm -hmm. and then and then it becomes one of those like anthem type things and so <laughs> yeah. you know if you're going to introduce kind of a gimmick i mean you know, when i do um 
a speaking gig and I prefer more intimate mm. settings I'm not a big huge you know thing um, right. I like everyone just to take three deep breaths mm -hmm. and center themselves because for me it's, everybody's coming in with different energies and yeah. I play off energies and mm -hmm. so if there's so many energies out there it's rather scattered and it makes me scattered so <laughs> I, you know by having everyone take the deep breaths and calm down they're in presence yeah. and that allows my presence to come forth so you know it's okay for us if we're doing a presentation to maybe you know set your stage and if you want people to do something mm -hmm. then you know that's okay because now you've set the stage for them to listen to you and that's really important uh, i know a lot of speakers their beginning of their speech or their presentation is rough mm -hmm. because they didn't take the time mm -hmm. to take a breath to really, I like to do breathing before I get on stage, you know, take that breath just to center yourself. But you also have to think about who your audience is mm -hmm. and what their needs are. And if you come in subtle and quiet and subdued, that's the way it's going to go. Yes. If you want energy, if you want excitement, if you want power, you've got to bring it mm -hmm. right from the get go. And, and there's uh, and there's some people with the gift of that power in their in their soft tones. Yes. You oh, know, sure. there, there are some people that can capture a room with the whisper, right? Mm -hmm. Because very often it's the the presence of who they are before even the yes. words come out. Right, that people, oh, they're getting on stage. Oh, you know, and yes, you do that to celebrities, but there are many speakers like that. Mm. That the anticipation of this speaker um, is somebody where you feel the essence of them before they yeah. even start. So, if you have stepped, as you said, breathing, centering, you've stepped mm. into your own essence, that's what precedes you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So do you work more with, you know, big corporations or solopreneurs or small entrepreneurs? It's really more with the small entrepreneurs, um, the, the small business people and the youth. Mm -hmm. I, I really, my whole mission is also to have the world a better place by having each of our children have their voice. Amen. Most certainly. Um and, you know, the thing about the youth, and I, I don't know if you, you have found this, but I've I found this, the confidence level in their message and what they've got to say. And I don't know whether it's they just haven't built up the baggage yet. You know, even yeah. some of them are not necessarily coming from a tranquil home, but they have a message and a drive mm -hmm. behind it. And that, that confidence that they exude out there is quite exemplary. So what I found in the last 12 years is, there's a, a lot of kids that, especially because of the gaming and the use of phone and things like that, where they don't know, they are comfortable looking at you mm. when they're, you're speaking to you. And so whenever I work with them, I, I, it's one of those things. I want you to understand the power of your eye contact, yeah. that it, it tells me I can trust you. You're being sincere that that connection stays while you're talking with me. And, and also the confidence will come. I, I have students that will come up in, to speak and they are a shrunken mess. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it isn't until you start to tell them what they're doing right and yes. how they are impacting you and and as they see that they can trust you or me, all of a sudden, the stories mm -hmm. about them, which is the first thing that I want them to tell me, start to come out. And the things that a lot of the kids that I work with go through are things that even at 64, I've never experienced. Right. And, and what you find is, and to me, this was one of the reasons I started this, I, for four minutes, listened to that child completely enough to take notes about what they did well, what they could improve. And for some of them, that is the first time anyone paid listened to them for four minutes, listened to them without interruption, and listened to them thoughtfully enough to tell them how they could get better and what they did that was great. And 
you just see the change in their demeanor. You see the change in their stature. And each week they get better and better. And I see that in adults as well. Yes. But for me, with the kids, it was just so impactful of how we could make them have a better high school experience, college experience, first job experience, just by giving Life them Life experience. Experience. Yes. You're teaching yes. them how to communicate with other people. I mean, that absolutely. is a foundation for absolutely mm -hmm. everything they're going to do in life. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, by pointing out, because I'm sure many of them have been pointed out what they do wrong, but by pointing out, you know, this is, this is really good. This aspect is really good. You know, and how about we change this or change that? You're not criticizing them. The critiquing of them is how to do it better. And for yeah. many of these kids, all they've ever been told is what they're doing wrong. Right. Well, I think the difference, too, is when I tell them how what they could improve upon, I tell them why I show yeah. I demonstrate the difference and let them feel what the difference is. Yes. And that's so much better than me telling them, well, that just stunk. You know, you, you, you should sit down and have a, the rest of your day <laughs> to <laughs> contemplate what you've done. That's not going to motivate. Yeah. And my whole thing is I want you to come up the next time and are excited about it yeah yeah that's i mean what why are we getting up in front of people or why are we conversing with people because we're trying to build relationships and make mm -hmm. connections right and if we look at every interaction we do as a relationship and what yeah. kind of relationship you want that invitation to that relationship is very very much in how you present yourself are you welcoming do people want to know more about you? You know, uh, do they hear what you have to say and they're intrigued, right? Mm -hmm. And it's whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, a lot of people go to product first, you yeah. know, and it's like, no, before mm -hmm. I do any business with you, I want to know if I want to do business with mm -hmm. you, who are you? Yeah, so true. And and that's why you have to be authentic. That's that's why you just got to let the walls down. Mm. And, you know, a, a relationship is two way. Yeah. And it's not me talk, 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 talk to you. It's me listening to you and seeing how our relationship can grow by things that we have in common, as well as, you know, you have a problem, I can solve it or I can find somebody to help you. But until you establish that, and it's not a one and done, you know, it's mm. very rare that you'll make a sale the first time that's going to be a lasting sale. Yeah. You might you might get a, a, a quick sale, but you want a, a not With a customer, customer. you don't want a customer, you want a client, yes. you want somebody who is going to be almost like a partner with you mm. because of what you have to offer them. The greatest uh, compliment you can have in any business is a referral. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have this great experience. You've got to, you've got to see if you know they can help you like they help me, because mm -hmm. that's trust. Yeah, and you have yeah. to earn that trust. You have to build mm -hmm. that trust by not looking at people as a dollar sign. Yeah. Right, but looking at them as you know as whatever level friend, because if we can't treat each other in a friendly manner, why are we even doing? business go behind a screen and don't interact right it's uh, yeah we we need to be a lot kinder to other people but we first have to be kinder to ourselves yeah and I think a lot of the communication failures that we might have if you will um are having a lot of people with a lack of trust yeah I I just came back from a conference where we were talking about trust and belief. And I was so amazed at how many people, when uh, one of the exercises, we went around the room saying, do you trust me? No, yes, no, maybe. And there were a lot of people that said no, or maybe. And we just met these people, you know, it's like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> your first impression. And, and it's because as you got to know them, it was, there are these walls that they put up. And I think it's, it's part of that whole communication thing. You know, I don't want to take the time to get to know you because I don't, you know, I, I'm not quite sure what. I think it has to change. I think that's where, uh, you know, part of what my mission is to help people 
get over being afraid to just have a conversation and let people know who you are, what you're all about. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's a kind of a tough question to ask someone you've just met because, you know, I would love to trust you. Let's get to know mm-hmm. each other, you know, but you yeah. know, that already has put a mistrust in the fact, even in that question. Right. So, you know, if it's like, um, I'd love to know more about your work and it could be, you know what, I don't need this right now, but however, mm-hmm. I have someone that I know again, that referral, you've, mm-hmm. you've gained enough trust to believe in what that person is doing, that you do want to refer them to other people. But what you don't want is somebody saying, well, okay, you don't want to, who are your people? Give me your emails. Da, 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 da. Read your... <laughs> no, <laughs> because that pushy type, yeah. you know, um, you got to buy from me. You've got to work with me. You've got to do this and that. It shows desperation, but it's so old mm. passe style that yeah. never worked. And it really, everything is about building that relationship, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And that's why I like to do just the 30 minute chat with people mm-hmm. it, because it's, I don't know if it's a good fit and, yes. you know, I, I don't want to make that assumption that it is or isn't. So I just want to, you know, have that get to know you kind of conversation and, and see if there should be another conversation right. until we can come to the point that, you know, maybe I have something for you, but as you said, you know, at, out of my network, there may be somebody I know that can help you. And I am happy to refer you to somebody that can help you because the bottom line is I want to help you. Yeah. That's my goal. And if I personally can't do it, I may know somebody else who can. And we've also got Mm -hmm. to honor our own style, honor our own way. You know, as I refer to is uh, we're all in discovery of our own instrument, Mm -hmm. learning how to play that instrument and then finding that orchestra in which to join <laughs> that we can play together in harmony because we respect each other's instrument, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, not every instrument is going to be right for every number of piece mm-hmm. of music. So it is, if you meet somebody, yeah, they're a really nice person, but they're just, I just, you know, not <laughs> connecting or just not, it's not my style. It's yeah. okay to, you know, that you don't connect with that style. It's all right. Yeah. And it's okay to say, you know, I really like what you're doing, but not for me. Uh, And a lot of people are too scared to say that, you know, or or even to say it to a client, you know, Mm -hmm. potential client. They've had that half hour. And it's like, what what do I say? I really don't want to take this person on. And so (laughs) they start putting obstacles in the way. And this other person, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. God, how do I get rid of this person? (laughs) And again, it's there are always words and tones in which we can say to, you know, um, I don't feel I can help you. Yeah. But however, I'm most certainly going to keep you in mind for people who can. Yeah, for sure. And and I think then that just is the the building of trust. And and whenever it it will reciprocate, you know, at some point in time. And and that's not really why we're doing this, but you know, that's what happens. That's what friends do. And that's what the whole point of the relationship is. And and I think whenever you come to that gathering that meeting of minds with that mindset that this is just to see if there's anything here yeah and yes. there's no pressure you're you know a I, sign I'm not, on the dotted line <laughs> I, i'm not looking for your credit card i, yeah. I just want to see if there's something here yeah. the world is a big place there are millions of people so don't go in it as a desperate move that i have to have you i you know it's- desperation does not create mm-hmm. it does not it destroys so um you know there's a lot of people in as a solopreneur and they maybe have got a great product or they've great this or great that and but they just don't know how to present it you know and it's like well i've got to present this and this is what it means mm-hmm. to me but, but what what am i meant to say to people well what does it mean to you that's yeah. what you're presenting, right? But they feel that they have to present something else to other people. Do you find that is one of the common denominators on, oh, on people? Oh, yeah. They, and they, they feel that it has to be perfect. Yeah. And it really needs to be kind of connecting mm. with that person on the other side. It, it, you could have this product and the way you pitch it to one person is different than the next person the you're not educating them yeah you're 
you know, you're not even entertaining them, but you're listening to what their needs are and you're answering their needs. Mm -hmm. And so the message has to be that way. As you're trying to figure out what the message is, think of what your customer needs, Mm -hmm. all the things that that product that you have, that service that you have that fulfills a need of the mom, of the dad, of the, you know, the business person, of the kids, what needs does it meet? And as you're talking to that audience, that's your message. I don't know how many times I have been pitched where it ramble, ramble on. It can do this for you, can do that for you, can do that for you. And I just not said anything because they've not (laughs) asked me anything. And then at the end of it and say, none of that matters to me. Yeah. Why not? It's so great because none of it fits my lifestyle. Right. You know, and I had a a really good friend. I have a really good friend that when she started with this one company, she wanted to sell me fake nails. I've got to try these nails. They're fantastic. fantastic." I had three young children. The last (laughs) thing I needed was fake nails, right? It ended up that the company had some incredible nutritionals that when I finally got around to seeing what else was there that I did need, literally changed my health. radically in my life but it again going back to if you have the conversation in the conversation the people will reveal what they need now you can say I've got something for that Mm -hmm. yep and and if you go at as a pro that approach of I, I really want to know about you. I know all about me. I know yes. all about my product, but I'm this, I'm trying to build a relationship yeah. here. So I'd like to know about you. What do you do? What do you care about? And in that growth of the conversation, in that growth of that relationship, you're going to discover things. That's why I say it doesn't, it's generally not a one call kind of thing. Yeah. You know, you've, you've got to really build it and develop that relationship to be able to know exactly what they want. And as you said, if there's more than one product in your portfolio, there could be something that Mm -hmm. you didn't even think about that they could use, you know, until you've had that conversation and they've revealed their problem. Right. Um, When people are presenting today, an awful lot of people are doing it via Zoom and you know, and, and it has relaxed the way we present, right? And it's a little bit more intimate because kind of more face-to-face. But right. have you found there's a few faux pas that people have, you know, whether they're <laughs> one-on-one or whether there's a group of them there, you know, uh, somebody picking yeah. their nose or doing something yeah. else in the middle of it. But have you found that, you know, because it's not in the boardroom in front of a group of people where you have that any easier energy and eye contact, a little hard maybe sometimes to have that direct eye contact with people if they're on a multiple Zoom mm-hmm. and they've got something to present? You know, what would be your tips on that? One of the things that really always drives me crazy is if they're on their phone <gasps> and they're walking <sighs> as they're talking to yeah. you. Or yeah. presenting. Yeah. And it is almost, you know, can get you nauseous. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Ooh, through, I'm getting seasick oh, here. Yes. Or, <laughs> or they're they are holding their phone and I see the ceiling mm-hmm. and, and not, up their and nose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yes, that's the other thing. You know, if if your camera is looking up <laughs> the person's nose, that's not good either. No, no. So the position of your camera needs to be at your eyes, ideally. Um, if you're on a laptop, that's where you tend to get the people looking up your nose because yes. the laptop is lower. So put it on some books. Yes. <laughs> or don't have it, it on your lap because as you're talking, the laptop yeah. is doing this. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, again, we're making us <laughs> nauseous. Yeah. So, and, and I always uh, have to, I, I'll do a 30 minute. Well, I'll look at what your background is. I'll look at your lighting. I'll look at your camera placement because the lighting's huge. It it has to be in front of you. And you, if you have windows to the side, Mm -hmm. then that's going to shadow your face on either side. And, And again, it's that making me feel as if I'm just talking to you. Mm-hmm. And if I have shadow or I have poor lighting that I can't see you, I can't trust you. I, yeah, I can't, yeah. I, I, you know, you're, straight, you're I can't so busy that... distracted by trying yeah. to see them or hear them. Yes. Right. Oh, that, yes. that you can't focus in on the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So th- those are the, 
the tips that I try to offer. There's five of them. You know, you just want to make sure that your lighting's good, your sound is good. You want to make sure your camera placement is such that you can have that eye connection. You also want to make sure that if you're using any audio visual type of things with Zoom that you can do, like if you're doing a presentation, don't have the presentation up the whole time. Right. Because yes. then that disengages, you know, that takes the eye contact away. You can have that your virtual background is your presentation. That somewhat helps. But the virtual backgrounds, I don't care for because, no, you know, because our it's a piece of water the head. Go yeah. away, yeah, you know, 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 type of thing. Half the head gone. And yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I prefer not to use virtual background. I blur, as you see here, but or I have just my regular background. But you, you want to make sure your presentation is not everything. Yeah. Because again, as we said earlier, it is about the relationship. It is about the connection. And if you just have a, this PowerPoint that's informing and educating, it is not touching their heart. Yeah. And you have to touch their heart. Right. That's, that's the connection. I mean, that's the yeah. connection with everything in life. You know, we yeah. all need, we're heart centered. And when we mm -hmm. speak to the heart, that's when we are centered and we can receive the information yeah. better. You know, right. the one thing that came out of COVID that was actually kind of quite wonderful, all your talk show hosts and things like this had to do it from Zoom from the home. Yeah. And people were in their homes. We saw more in-depth conversations Mm -hmm. in people in the more in natural setting yes and i found that it, there was just so much more kind of relaxed honesty than being in front of the camera and i've got five minutes to do my blurb and off i go you know mm -hmm. and yeah. i found that in a lot of ways it was so much more engaging yep i i know i it comes to mind uh, one of the ellen shows from her house and her um producer or whatever was in the background in the in the windows oh right she i remember that and she didn't allow him in the house because <laughs> <laughs> of covid and it made it so fun and mm. so natural and you enjoyed that whole time that they were doing the the show and granted you know her show in the studio as you said yes. was wonderful but it just made it different and mm. it made it fresh and and we needed it we yeah. needed to laugh we did. And she provided us laughter. Now, that's another thing I'm going to talk about. Inserting humor. Now, you know, mm -hmm. we all want a touch of humor in the conversation or in the presentation. But mm -hmm. don't come out with a joke that A, could be offensive, B, that you can't yeah. deliver, or is just really out of contents. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember my early days at the, the transportation company. I was, I went to teach a class in um, Mexico and I don't have great Spanish as a second language <laughs> so I had an interpreter and I had my whole shtick of I was teaching barcoding the driest subject oh. in the world <laughs> like dry paint <laughs> yeah but people would as I was teaching in the states you know people would say why are those people cracking up so much I know that's a barcoding class and it was just the the satire, the timing of it. But when I went to Mexico, I couldn't use any of those things that they wouldn't, mm. they didn't get it. They didn't understand yeah. it. And so I had to just improvise and I met with them in advance and said, okay, this is what I was going to say. What else should I say? Yes. <laughs> because it's not going to fly. And that was really helpful. And I would suggest that to anyone, you know, whenever you're going to an audience, if you can have a, a sort of a pre-trip of the audience and who they are and make sure that what you're going to say is uh, appropriate and always you know look at look at my videos of, of my speaking or yes. or just kind of see okay this is what I do is it going to be offensive to you right of course right and, and that's you know something there's actually two things I want to, to mm -hmm. point out here is in a preparation like if, if you're um you're going to be inviting somebody or, you know, you're going to be on somebody's show or present in a presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I send out, you know, that package as you saw, mm -hmm. and, it, and it shows my style, what I expect from you and what I need from you. Right. I have been quite astonished of how few people read. And then they come <laughs> on and they ask the questions that were all in the form or they're ill-prepared. Yeah. Right. And it's like out of respect of wherever you go, do your homework. 
yeah. or, you know, really look at, if you're going to be presenting at X, Y, and Z, you know, can you be this or do mm. you need to hone something back? Or are you prepared for it? You know, yeah. and it's, I think that's just respectful. And it, yeah. but I have found people, I used to say they're headliners now, but I actually know they're emojis now. You know, people have just forgotten the content of life and everybody's going to the quick, uh, you know, subtitle there. But um, that is one thing. But the other thing I think is in that preparation, if you are getting up and doing an actual presentation, you don't want to be reading it. But what I do is I highlight because I've got, you know, I can't see short things. So I don't want to wear my glasses through it. So I take (laughs) big paste paper in front of me and I have, highlighted big words of topics I want to make sure I get back on track with things I know I want to say that I want to incorporate but what comes in between is just something that I am you know naturally in tuned with and it just comes out and if I find myself going off topic or too much on something I can then hone in on the next one but you can do, we don't want to by day reading and then it's dry it's not engaging your eyes are down all the time right have something it's, that can bring you back to it mm-hmm. as an indicator, but not to not completely miss it. Well, if you think about it, if you have to read, does that tell me you know your product, right. your service, what yeah. you're doing? Yeah. And, you know, it's it could be, it's it goes back to that conversation. I, I always tell the folks, when you write a speech or a presentation, Nobody knows what you wrote. Mm -hmm. So if you don't give it to me verbatim, it could, it could, it could be that you did write the best, Mm -hmm. the most engaging, the most clever words on that paper. But as you were delivering it, if you forgot something, you're smart enough to just improvise, to get through, just to, to say what comes to your heart, to say what makes sense. And, and, don't panic. Like if you forget something, just go on. And I think that's where a lot of speakers have that bad moment Mm -hmm. is that, oh my God, I was supposed to say something. You know, if I screw up, I'll just say, oh, I forgot that. Let me go back. (laughs) Yes. And and let me cover this. (laughs) And I think that's something that's really, really important. Everybody's trying to be perfect. And, you know, things are going to happen. You drop something or this something, you have a cough in the middle of it or this, that or whatever, you know, it's own it. You're human. You know, things do happen. Make light of it. Make fun of Mm -hmm. it. Make fun of yourself, not derogatory, but just lighten up the thing. And let everybody know that you're not a robot. You know, you're a human being that stuff happens. I had had one guest on here. I'm an asthmatic. And this first time, and hopefully the only time it ever happened to me, but I had an asthma attack. Uh-huh. And now, A, I've never seen myself have an asthma attack. So seeing my face and how my whole body contorts, I mean, it's scary mm. enough. I mean, I freaked myself yeah. out. But, you know, I took my pump and I went through my breathing exercise. And I, fortunately, I was with a woman who has um, 13 children. <laughs> so, and she's America's super mom. And she's just, it's all right, dear. Take your time, dear. It's okay. I was so grateful yeah. it was her because I didn't yeah. freak her out. And then I just got my lungs back in order. And, uh, you know, it was a bit husky, which I am after an aspen, and carried on. Now, I yeah. cut out the actual grotesque looking, you know, but, you know, that I had an aspen, I owned it. Sorry, folks, I had mm-hmm. an aspen, that's why I'm sounding hoarse, and, uh, and carried on because yeah. life happens. And, yep. you know, when it does, we've just got to deal with it in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was lecturing for church, which I do quite often. And so I walked up on the stage with a new pair of shoes. And I just twisted my ankle as I was walking (laughs) and went down. Yes. So you saw, and it was being live streamed. (laughs) So you saw me up (laughs) and down. And then I just popped back up and proceeded to, you know, do the reading and went away and it was like you know there's nothing I could do about it the reading had to be done yep and you know I I figured they'll either uh just use another person (laughs) for live streaming the next day or they'll just um have a a chuckle I don't know but it was fine I didn't die I always tell people if it doesn't kill you or put you in jail 
do it. Right. You know? Or hospital. You didn't break a leg or anything, right? You know, and well, uh, I, you know, and again, it's how many times have we seen celebrities fall off the stage or, no, what, yeah. uh, you know, at the Oscars, this and that, fall up the stage, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, again, just make fun, make light of yeah. it. And people aren't laughing at them. You know, ooh, 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 ooh. nobody's doing that. They're laughing with yeah. oh God, everybody's nightmare and she's just gone and yeah. done it, right? And, yeah, and right. Uh, you know, it, in a lot of ways, it's kind of empathy and compassion yeah. from people, yeah. right? If they, if they do laugh or if they, you know, when you're in a restaurant, you suddenly hear a whole load of plates crashing, hmm. you know, where we, we start clapping. Yes. Bravo, <laughs> you know, you're not a Greek restaurant. You know? <laughs> and it just... <laughs> It lightens everything up so people aren't going, oh, and the boss isn't going, oh, you know, because our yeah. reaction is going to be what his reaction is to whoever did it. Yeah. And and how you react to mm -hmm. is going to influence the audience as oh. well. So, uh, you know, I, I always say, well, they're going to see I'm human and, and that they could do this too. <laughs> yes. You know, look, this is a, another important thing, actually, is that if you, you know, you're doing a presentation, then you're open to question answer period mm -hmm. and you get given a question that you just don't know how to handle or is maybe aggressive. And uh, mm -hmm. how would you handle that? Well, if it's one that I don't have the answer to, I think you have to own up and yes. say, you know, I uh, thank you for that question, but I, I really don't have the answer, but I will follow up with you mm. and get that. And if it's in a, a Zoom room or something, either you can always say, put something in chat and I'll get back with you or my team has got that. If it's an aggressive question, and it just depends on how aggressive it is. Yeah, you always get but a heckler it, somewhere. Yes, you know? that's yeah. right. Um, you you have to try to diffuse it as easily and as professionally as yes. possible. And um, for Zoom, if I have somebody that is, and we've had the Zoom bombers, mm -hmm. you know, where um, you can remove them from your room yeah. and uh, yeah. take take advantage of that. But you know, if you're in person and you have that heckler, you just have to do your best to diffuse the situation. And sometimes humor yes. is the best way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you, you, you could be in a boardroom, you know, especially mm -hmm. as a woman, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you generally got that guy there that wants to bring you down a peg or two, right? Yeah. And yeah. then kind of brings up something that is just completely, you know, inappropriate. Uh, you know, don't be inappropriate back, yeah. you know, or I'm, you know, thank you for take, for for notifying me that um, you know I'll I'll take a look at that or I won't. You know, it, <laughs> it is you know it's a it's I heard you. I didn't like what you had to say. You know, I I got attacked. I was a, a mother's group and I'd just become chairwoman of this mother's group. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did is it was a preschool, so the the pre preschool, so the kids were graduating and going up into school, you know, kindergarten, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to throw a party for them, you know, because they're graduating preschool, yeah. they've been there since babies, right? So I had bought all of these fun because it was the eighties. I'd bought these fun shoelaces of all ne neon colors, etc., and I'd spent <laughs> twenty dollars. And it was my first meeting, and this woman got up. Where the hell do you get off? Who do you think you are spending our money? And just let loose on me. And and I said, well, uh, a, I had the authority because I could spend up to such and such. And but if it offends you, don't worry, it will come out of my pocket. Now, what's the next business? I was shaking like a leaf. Yeah, and, but and still, you handled it. I, I handled it. I went home and cried like crazy because it really <laughs> was an attack. And the interesting thing is, at the end of year, when we had a mother's potluck party, women who didn't, you know, who, nobody said anything. Everybody was in shock. Yeah. They mm -hmm. came up to me afterwards and said, "She's here. Do you want me to ask her to leave?" I said, "No, no." And she even came up to me as if nothing had ever happened. And I surface talked with her. That's it. Just surface talked yeah. with her. No other engagement. People say, how can you do that? How can I not? Yeah, that's exactly right. You, you just, you know, you don't feed that. Yeah. And I think that's where people go wrong. Yes. They, they think that they have to stand up for their rights or mm. whatnot. And, and it's just feeding yes. that negativity. So um, I learned that early on in life mm. that it, it's sometimes a smile and a walk away. Yes. Is, is far better. Yes. You know, the, you know, that the wonderful thing, squirrel, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your attention is suddenly being caught elsewhere. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it does happen. And, yes, it does kind of shake you up. But your persona must always be calm because mm. anything above calm, there's going to be chaos. And, yeah. you know, if you're going to shiver and shake later on and go, oh, that was really hit me in the gut. Um, it's okay. You can shiver mm-hmm. and shake and, and talk it out then and then let it go. Right, right. Right, because it, it is and, going to happen. And there's always, a, a, you know, if it's a work situation, that conversation with that person, that individual can be in a private yeah. room appropriately done and not in front of everyone. Right. And, you know, sometimes if it really was a personal attack, then get you know somebody with you either the boss or this or that oh sure in that mm-hmm. room because you know that person now thinks that they've got you alone so yeah mm-hmm. there's you know there's always that sense of caution um you know it's the same thing with social media trolls uh, we've got yeah. some people their lives are so miserable so they've got to go and create misery wherever they are and of course social media is a wonderful platform for it <laughs> and so you know you see somebody that does video presentations you know, mm-hmm. I've got a workshop coming or I've got this coming and this and that. And they've got a video workshop. And most people will be, that's great. That's wonderful. When is it? How can I support this and that? And then you'll get the troll, right? Yeah. So, A, you can delete that troll. Mm-hmm. And they yes, say, or, I'm so sorry, you're not attending. <laughs> but <laughs> it is, you know, don't, don't give it credence. Yeah, right? They're trying absolutely. to stir things up. No, oh, you know, you've, you've had 50 wonderful comments. Don't let that one troll. Mm-hmm. you know change your whole day because that's yeah. their grief they're trying to impose upon you yeah I with podcasts as you know I, I get comments back mm-hmm. from some of my and I had this one person from another country that kept on putting these random comments always the same comment for yeah. all all the different things and I just delete yes. delete delete you know I'm not going to answer you back I'm not going to comment nope. back it's just delete yeah, exactly. If you cannot be kind and there is no no really thought or content behind it, you mm-hmm. know, um, that there, there, there's no conversation to have. This is just you imposing. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you know, I don't want you in my arena. This is where the positivity lies and we're here yeah. to support one another, celebrate one another. And uh, you're coming in. It's like, a, you know, the nail on the chalkboard. And I don't mm-hmm. like that sound. Yeah. So. And and it doesn't support my finding your confidence. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, and and also for people like that, you know, a lot of people then become engaged. And why do you feel like that? What's happened? This and that. No, no, no. They or oh, they've got an audience now, mm-hmm. right? Now there are yeah. people that are in pain that are going to be speaking from yeah. that pain, and maybe you can help them, you know. But sometimes there's so much in that pain, nothing can help them until they're willing to yeah. go through the pain. But for a lot of people, as you said, I, I don't know about you, but well, I get a lot of, um, and it's the same, uh, it's the same text every time. Yeah. Oh, you have beautiful eyes. I, I uh, you know, looked at you this and that, and I'm a single Christian man with a, a widow with a kid, and and I'm looking for a good Christian woman. And in my comment of that, that is, I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the same text all the time (laughs) yeah I just a lot of times just say uh, married 43 years happy (laughs) right (laughs) done no it it reminds me this it's off topic but it reminds me (laughs) of a 1975 I'm in Greece traveling around Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm um, have been up to the Parthenon and walked around all day long this this guy had been following me and then I go into this kind of um wonderful arena in this in the center of Athens a huge big kind of coffee place and this Mm -hmm. is early in the season it's March so not everything's opened up yet and I sit and have a coffee and I'm pretty well on my own and the guy comes and sits next to me and, you know, the real lovely little slimy guy, you know, takes my <laughs> hand and I look at him and, uh, you know, I'm 20 at that time. And you go, and I always wore a wedding ring as a kind of a form of defense. I know you and I, oh, I'll show you a good time. Oh, no, I'm married. No matter. No matter. I show mm-hmm. a better time. Then I went, I'm pregnant. No matter. No matter. <laughs> then I said, and then I, then I started to cry and go, I have syphilis. <laughs> gone <laughs> but it's just like you know what some people will extent they will go to right and you know it doesn't matter what arena you're in you've got to remember 
whether you're traveling or your day-to-day -day grocery store shopping, we're always presenting ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And I think people forget that quite often. And, and especially now with social media, you know, it is, uh, we were saying to be authentic, uh, but you do have a product Yes. and uh, you do, you do have something that is going to be remembered. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm fine with uh, dancing and doing things on, on TikTok and yeah. whatnot. Um, but whenever you go into some barrage uh, about your political beliefs or whatever, you have to remember, uh, it's, it's kind of like what I told my daughters when they were growing up. I said, if you put something on social media that it better be okay to be on the bus that's going up and down from, yeah. you know, where we live to downtown Atlanta and back, because that's what social media is. And, mm -hmm. and, oh, oh, by the way, it's there for a long time, Yes, you know? And we've seen this over and over again, a celebrity that's at the top of the tower on the huge big pedestal make one wrong comment uh, misconstrued or, you know, they didn't mm -hmm. realize the tone or the words that they were using out there, how mm -hmm. it could be misconstrued. And then everybody's out with the lynching and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how people can turn on you so much, you know, and, you know, you, 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 your whole topic here is, you know, what's in your message. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got to be careful of the words that we choose in our message. We may say it with mm -hmm. sarcasm, but is it being picked up with sarcasm? Yeah. Is it being picked up with humor? You know, and how yeah. can those words be turned around by somebody else's mind and be misrepresented? So mm -hmm. we've got to be mindful not only of the tone and the approach, but the words themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You always have to, as, and even in, in your emails that you send, yeah. you have to be aware and, and read that email. So I, you know, a good secret is to send it to yourself before you send it out, especially if yeah. you're re responding to somebody that's angered you. Um, yeah. As husband, <laughs> uh -huh. you want to respond to a lover, yeah. uh, yes. write it out first and then go, okay, time for uh, editing. <laughs> that, that probably doesn't sound so good. Yeah. yeah, but but your tone, especially when you write those texts or those um, those social media posts, the tone is not always understood mm -hmm. and therefore what is out there, what you put out there could be absolutely misinterpreted. And um, are you prepared to deal with that? Yeah. But, you know, it, caution is better than backlash, mm -hmm. you know, and it's again, going back to stop being the headliner of the emoji and think, you know, think, you know, what are you responding? Mm -hmm. What you're responding to out there? Uh, what are they really trying to say? Yeah. Or are you upping with something you want to say? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and if you really are putting something out there, have you put thought behind it? Yeah. You know, and how it's going to be. And um, I think also we, we've become so much of a society where we don't pause. We yeah. don't feel we don't connect with ourselves. We're always living in the outside in life instead of the inside out life and in that we make wrong decisions and because mm -hmm. we're being governed by this society that tells us we should do this we're only popular if we do that we're only yeah. you know um, i'm only a great speaker if i've got a million people following me you know the impact is if you have five people following you and you change one person's life yeah. right you know it's um throw away the numbers mm -hmm. because those numbers are just numbers it, it bring it down to the impact of what difference are you having in that person's life right in front mm -hmm. of you? Yeah, because if you are putting your integrity or your values, your core values at jeopardy because you're trying to go for the numbers, yeah, then yes, is that is that truly what you want as your legacy? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you get it as a podcaster, you know, how many followers do you have? I'm only coming on if mm -hmm. you have so much. And I said, think you're declining. Yeah. Uh, because that's yeah. what you're driven by, then you're the wrong clientele. Mm -hmm. uh, if your show has only impact with one person, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because that's yeah. what it's about. But now let's yeah. look at your book, Unstoppable. Yes. Being fierce, fearless, and unfuckwithable in life and business. Yes. And, and they're one of the same, aren't they? Life and they business. They are. Your business it and is. your life are all entwined. Yeah. And 
and I think, you know, that's why I always end my podcast, you know, about the journey, um, because life is a journey. And in your journey, you're going to have relationships, you're going to have business adventures, but it's all wrapped around, you know, what is important to you? What, yeah. what do you want to have between the, you know, those two dates, you know, in your dash? Yeah. But, you know, I think the unstoppable, you know, it, it, it is not about you taking up arms. It mm -hmm. is about, you know, the fierceness of your awesomeness, of your yeah. essence of who you are, what you believe in, what is your driving force? You know, yeah. who are you here to help? Who are you here to serve? That kind of fierce, that yeah. kind of unstoppability is, you know, really where, where the success lies. Yeah. One of the talks that I do is, um, keeping pace in 2022 mm. and it's all about being persistent yeah actively listening to your audience mm -hmm. having courage and empathy and and I think you know that's really what unstoppable is because if you truly believe in what you are who you are yeah. you are unstoppable you know it, it's and too many women need to believe that you know yeah. uh, there are just so many women that doubt themselves that don't believe they're worth the time the energy and they you know they are they have to just know that that they have something to offer they just have to believe it uh, and that belief is again an inside job you know when you stop living by everybody else's dictation mm -hmm. and expectation and you ask yourself what do you want how yeah. do you want to feel? What do you want to stand for? Who are yeah. you in your own presence? When you go in and just, what makes me happy? What makes my soul, heart, and spirit come yeah. alive? That my mind knows what it needs to know when it needs to know it. And when you're mm -hmm. in that space, there's your clarity. And yes, yeah. it does take persistence to stay in that space and to yeah. always represent yourself in that space and to be aware of those things that are going to pull you out of it. Yeah. Uh, because that's, there's and that, that does. but that's where the courage comes in yeah. I, I think you know the other misnomer is that that again that we have to be perfect yeah. you know we have to try so much harder we have to you know do so much more which sadly in some cases is the, the way it is but it's okay to fail and and that's what we have to learn to embrace mm. too it, it every failure is just a lesson. A turn, uh, yeah, it's a lesson. It's a fork in the road yeah. where you had an opportunity to make a, a decision. You know, your your GPS was a little off that day mm -hmm. and you just recalculate and start again. Exactly. You know, I love the word flawsome. I yes. Think it's wonderful. Yes. You know, I mean, who I hasn't got some sort of flaw? But mm -hmm. does that have to be a bad flaw? Is it just a wonderful quirk? You know, I'm I'm dyslectic and my kids are always making fun of me because I make up words or I reverse them or I do something with them. And, uh, you know, they're laughing at me and, uh, you know, it's OK, you know, and it is who I am. And, you know, they know that mum's got some quirk. Well, that just makes me flawsome. Right. Yes. It, my flaws is what's making me awesome. And if we could embrace mm -hmm. that instead of going, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. Well, look at what you can do and mm -hmm. put the gratitude, the attitude and the positivity on that. Yeah. So true that gratitude and attitude. Oh, you can't be unstoppable with that, with a bad attitude. No, you... <laughs> no. I'm not crash and burn, you know, with no. a bad attitude, no. you're going straight for the wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, ha you know, that's where your strength comes yes. and the ability to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And, and again, you know, understand that not everyone is, is wanting to change the world. Yes. But you are making an impact, you know, with your family, with your kids, with the people that you work with, every smile that you share is making an impact. So don't discount your worth, if mm. you will, because you don't think that you're, you're making that big of a difference. Everything that you do every day of your life is a gift and a moment of gratitude. Absolutely. And please don't compare. Yeah. You are you. Everyone else is taken. All right. You are yeah. awesome in who you are. Don't try That's and be. Right. You, other people can inspire you to find that illumination in yourself. <laughs> 
they could even guide you with their wisdom to find the wisdom within you. But the moment you try to become someone else, you've mm -hmm. lost you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's very much yeah. in the way you, when you present yourself, isn't it? And, and in any level, any speaking thing, if you're trying to be what you think people want to hear from you or a certain image that you think people want to see from you and it's not authentic and it's yeah. not coming from the heart and you don't believe in it, they're going to yeah. see the holes in it very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, you know, whenever I work with people, I, I have to know, I have to get to know who you are yeah. because I, I, you know, I can tell you things that you could do to change, but if you aren't comfortable in that, yeah, you know, then you're not going to, you're going to, that in uncomfortableness, if yes. you will, is going to show through and you're not going to be authentic. You're, and you're not going to listen to me, but if I can hear what you need, and be able to guide you to get to that place where you are comfortable, where you feel authentic, it will shine, it yeah. will show through, and it will make you so much more impactful. Yeah. I mean, so, we've got to get a bit uncomfortable to become comfortable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that change is always like, I mean, how many people stay in misery because it's just become their blanket? And, you know, oh, well, you know, it's, it's too uncomfortable to change. Well, are you comfortable now? Yeah. You know, and if, if you're not succeeding at something and you need the help to do so, yeah, step out of your comfort zone and, and step mm -hmm. into a, a beautiful world of the unknown in order mm -hmm. to discover. Discovery is wonderful. Wasn't this that what the last two years was for most of us? Yes. Was the discovery. I know I had been doing zoom training for oh, since 2016 <laughs> and uh for two years i was a region advisor during covid so from 2019 2021 and my districts were california california are the first clubs of toastmasters mm -hmm. the founding clubs so i go there and i try to tell them you you know to help with your membership you should do hybrid meetings yes. because traffic in LA sucks mm. and and you're you know take away excuses for people yeah. and they're like no you cannot do that you cannot present you cannot train you cannot speak on video it's just not going to work <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to 2022. <laughs> <laughs> so 2019 was that way. 2020 was a whole different thing. Yes. And it was like, oh, and it it was, you know, nice validation for me that I wasn't crazy, but right. but it really helped them change and know. reach a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. Oh god, yeah. All of a sudden they're having twice as many people exactly. come to their sessions because they're first of all everybody was lonely so yes. that was one thing right. but but they saw oh dang it worked <laughs> right and you know nobody had to travel anywhere I mean this is actually yeah. one of the problems that we're seeing in so many sectors of shortage of people yeah. because people are now you know well no I, I can work at home online I don't yeah. have to be in traffic you know, or pay exorbitant rents just to be near my work, which, of course, yeah. what we have here in BC. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the universe gave me a saying back in 2018. The universe is going to shake us up, to wake us up, for us to step up and change it up and grow up. Grow up vibrationally, but also grow up and stop being so whiny. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. <laughs> And, you know, for many people, they're still being shaken up. But for many yeah. people have gone, you know what, well, I'm stepping up. I'm changing this up. I'm not waiting. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the change. And my God, this change is so good. I've risen up. Mm -hmm. Right. But you've still got some mm -hmm. people complaining uh, mm -hmm. and they're still mm -hmm. in the shake up. And until they're shook up enough to, to step mm -hmm. out of that, then we can't do anything for them. So, so that's who um, I seek out in my as my uh, the people I can help. Okay, yes. now you've got that ep epiphany. Yes, <laughs> that yes, that life has to change. So, how can I help you? Right. Again, you know, I've got another saying: you can take a horse to water, and you can't make a drink. <laughs> that's but right. Leave it there long enough, and it's going to realize it's thirsty. <laughs> right. You know, Absolutely. people may go no, 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 and then eventually, you know, she's got a point. <laughs> 
right? So sometimes in anything that you do, you may be seeding the answer, seeding the possibilities. And the people will come round to you when they yeah. are ready because then yeah. it's like, okay, I understand the message now. Mm -hmm. There are no more excuses. Yeah. But we can't force it on anyone, no. right? And if you do do a presentation and nobody jumps and makes a sale, that's okay. You, If you've done it right, you have seeded. And mm -hmm. those people will come back to you when they're ready. And you yeah. want to lay as many seeds as you can out there <laughs> and don't forget to water them. That's exactly right. <laughs> So how do people get the book? How do people get to you if they need your help? Um, what are you offering them and how do they reach you? So the book is available on Amazon. And um, again, it's Unstoppable by Rochelle Marie Lawson. But if you um, do Unstoppable with my name, you should be able to find it as well. I'm one of 24 authors in that. So I'm chapter mm -hmm. five. Um, I do have a second book that is not available on Amazon, but it is available if you just go to um, email me at vicky.nethling. So my name. Can you spell your G name, please? Yeah. V-I-C-K-I dot N-O-E-T-H-L-I-N-G at gmail.com. And you can ask me for the Boost book, mm -hmm. which is just came out this past month. Um, you can go to learn more about my podcast, which is Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. And I have a lot of podcasts out there right now, but it's at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. Yes. Again, that's findyourleadershipconfidence.com. You can schedule time for a chat so we can have a conversation to see if there's some way that I can help you as becoming that 21st century leader that leads with your heart, your head, and your hands. Or if you want to get better at this virtual world yeah. or on stage, I absolutely would love to work with you to help you with your public speaking to take away that fear. You know, it's not going to actually take it away, but to maybe lessen the butterflies a little bit. But uh, I mean, you know, my mom was a stage actress and she, she always said, I've always got butterflies and nervousness mm -hmm. beforehand. And if somebody said, well, that shows you care, it shows you're yeah. engaged. And then the moment she was on the stage, it was gone. You know, so yeah. part of the butterflies and that nervousness is, is your psyche preparing. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why so many people have a particular ritual. I do this before I do that. I do that before I do any presentation or this and that. F you know, find one that's yours. Yeah. You, know? Uh, you know, for me, it's the breathing and getting the audience to breathe with me. Um, and, you know, find out what it is that's going to set your stage and, and set it within you first, because then you're going to be mm -hmm. so much more confident in what you do, right? Yeah. And I love whenever I get on on stage, to interact with the audience. I, I think yes, then that's favorite. where I, I just really, that makes it so fun and it makes, it really takes it away from, I'm, you know, talking to you. Yes. We're talking together. Yeah. And, I like and, doing a, you know, a, a, the, you know, what I'm there to talk about and then mm -hmm. open up to the questions and the questions that you get just yeah. broaden that wisdom, that knowledge mm -hmm. so much more. And, you know, it just becomes so much more interactive and becomes so much personal. And, you, you know, yeah. you want people to go away thinking, I really know her or, you know, mm -hmm. she was really friendly or I really learned something from that because they were <laughs> engaged. Right. But you don't want to go. That was a waste of time. So, yeah. it's, you know, you want people to, to feel they were connected. Mm hmm. Yeah, you want to feel that you help them yeah. or you listen to them enough to have them leave saying, I got a nugget. Yes. You know, I, I just want you to get one nugget. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. And, you know, it's like a, a good book. You can go back and read it again and there's something mm -hmm. or a movie and, and there's something you can learn all over again yeah. that you right. missed the first time because it wasn't for you the first time. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So same and, with and, a podcast. Go back and listen yeah. to it again. And there's another nugget in there that you missed. And that's the seeds that you were talking yes. about. Yeah. That you're planting. So, yeah. you know, 
And, but oh, if you re- don't water them, they're not going to grow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things I love about what I do, because, you know, I, I, again, I was at this conference this past week and there were people that we were relating to and building relationships with. And it was great that I could say, oh, wait, here's this person that I know could help you, or here's this person that will help you build your business or here's, you know, and that to me makes what I do so comfortable and so worthwhile is that I can connect people that will help them grow. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's, it's so satisfactory, satisfactory mm-hmm. to see, you know, people you've put together kind of hit it off and yeah. take off and do something together. And it's always, it's so very much satisfying, most certainly. Yeah. So, and, you know, if, if you're not doing what you love, nobody else is going to feel the love. So, you know, explore what is it that sets your heart on fire, that lifts your yeah. spirit up, that opens up your soul, that your mind then really just wants to grasp hold of. And then, you know, the more that you immerse yourself into it, the more you want to speak about it and you'll speak about it from passion. Mm-hmm. But at the same mm-hmm. time, Vicky's got techniques on how to present it that you're not overpowering and mm-hmm. that you are being in, invitational and also for which medium you're on. Stage, mm-hmm. projection, radio, pull it back, Zoom, connect eyeball. There's mm-hmm. so many different techniques, right? So reach yeah. out, Vicky. She's mm-hmm. offering you a half hour free consultation where you can get to know each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, they can just go to your site for that because I think we have a link for that. They on, can. Uh, so if you just go to findyourleadershipconfidence.com slash schedule, mm-hmm. you can, uh, you'll can you see there for uh, one, a, a chat with me or a slay your message right. um, link. And that way, again, I can look at your Zoom presentation and let you know what could be tweaked to make it better or if it's awesome. Yeah. And also, um, if you want to just email me at that vicky.netling at gmail. I have five tips, if you will, that will, I call it a checklist that you could put by your, your laptop yeah. or your computer. That's a reminder. Oh, wait, okay. This is what I need to do. Lighting's good. Yeah. Sounds good. So it's just that check to make sure that when you present yourself on zoom, you do your best. Every production company before they go on, they've got a bunch of people check, check, check. <laughs> and a three, two, one, live, <laughs> right? Yeah, why, yeah. why don't we need the check? Of course we do. Yeah. So, right, yeah. Just take it from the professionals, right? Yeah. And we can be that professional too. That's the awesomeness of uh, all these wonderful things that we have like Zoom and everything else today. So, yeah. and of course, if people want to be on your podcast, they can also reach out to you and also come and listen to the podcast and hear all the other wisdom that you share with others. If you want to be a guest, there is a section on guests, but it has an application. So what I like to do is we talked about how it's important to be prepared. So I ask you to fill out uh, just a brief application and it tells me a little bit about you Mm -hmm. and um, gives me your website, your social media. So I can look at that and see, you know, there's synergy. (laughs) Right. And and then we can go from there and you can um, I'll get in touch with you. And uh, if it's a fit, then we can either have a conversation or we can just go ahead and schedule. Right. So, of course, all of this, folks, is on her website uh, and you can reach out to it on findyourleadershipconfidence.com. The podcast, Becoming a Guest Conversation with Vicky, everything is there. And, uh, you know, just reach out. 30 minutes free consultation. That's really, really generous. So, uh, and, you know, it Every single one of you is presenting yourself in some way, even if it's just going for a job and an interview and you want to make Mm -hmm. a good impression without losing yourself. That is really, really important as well. So thank you so much for sharing with us today, Vicky. Thank you so much as well. It's been wonderful. Until next time, folks, remember how we present ourselves in every aspect of our life is how we're going to be received. So think about it. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. Find all of our shows on selfdiscoverymedia.com under podcasts or selfdiscoverymedia slash shows. And for all our current shows, go to What's New. We are supported by you, the audience. You will see a nice big shiny blue button for one-time donations or follow us on Patreon and you will be able to support us there. We enjoy bringing you such wisdom. And the next show will be up in just a moment. <laughs>